Bur a dafyn gwbl rhyfedd, sut mae eich diwnod wedi bod, a rhoan edw i, a chryson fe'n carsaf mwrn. Ah, in nawr yn Saesneg, and now in English. Uh, good morning, my strange people. How's your day been? Uh, I'm Rowan, and welcome to my spooky home. And it's been a while since I've done um, one of these. Uh, get ready while I, with me, while I get ready for going out to the bar. And why has it been a while? Well, cause uh, all hell broke loose last year, and this is this is my life now. But uh, on the good side, the uh, uh, Necto Nightclub downtown Ann Arbor, host of Factory Mondays, which is the second longest running uh, goth night in Michigan. For some reason, I mean it's more of a dark alternative thing. Oh, but whatever. It's, uh, they, uh, they've decided to, uh, uh, reopen. Uh, I think last week was their first week back open, and, of course, I found out after the fact because I barely checked face Facebook because while, uh, while Twitter has the reputation for turning everybody into a jackass, for some reason, Facebook is what does it to me. Like, I'm on Facebook, like, 20 minutes, and... Shit, I'm on Facebook five minutes, and depending on what the hell I'm reading, I just... I'm a complete dick bag within minutes, right? But that's another story for another time. So, anyway, uh... I'm gonna have to pause the camera for a bit in a minute or two, because I've got cupcakes in the oven, and I'm going to be... Like, this is going to be, like, one of the more bare-bones looks I've done in a while. At least, you know, for going out. Because, why? Because I've got, uh, I've still got shit I gotta do to finish the, uh, the preparations for tonight. Tonight, we do some things tonight, and something, something, something else, and something the... I forgot, tonight, tonight, I don't know lyrics right, but it's okay, cause I don't know, I don't know where I was going with that, I had an idea, and then it just like kind of wandered off, I had a thought, let's mourn my thought, but uh, then what happens is, um, wait, do I have two of the same thing, these better not be, no, they aren't, they're very close though, but, so uh, so yeah, now it's also a bit <laughs> earlier than I like to get ready to go out, but the last bus, like last, last bus, like if I miss this bus, I am not going, right? So that's, that's a thing that's gonna be a thing. Okay, so let's see. No, I, did I want to talk about anything? Um, let's say a yes, let's say yes, but let's say that I'm just gonna like rattle off some uh, random ass words of wisdom from uh, your friendly YouTube land aging goth. I had a powder. Okay, I could you. Okay, let's see. Got my. Okay, there's. It's not the exact one I was looking for, but oh well. Um, oh wait, no, you stay with me. Okay, so, random ass words of aging goth wisdom. First off, don't pay much attention to people who say, oh, aren't you a little too old to be wearing like, to be dressing like that? Or conversely is like, and now you're, you are, you are young, you need to, you know, look, I, I see people say the same thing, like, aren't you a bit young to be dressing like that? And then the same people will say, like, two years later, aren't you a little bit old to be dressing like that? And, uh, pay no, no attention to those people. They are killjoys. On some level, I want to assume that they are jealous that you have the guts to dress like that, and they never did. So they're trying to bring you down, but it's also quite possible that they just suck. Either way, 
my advice is to pity these people because they, they clearly have lost all sense of joy in life. A secondary word of wisdom is, as I've said many times before, especially on the, uh, especially on my WFKU streams, there are two kinds of typo negative songs. The first kind is doom metal with a gothic rock influence. And the second type is gothic rock with a doom metal influence. Next, let's say, while I have kind of agreed, like, this was a soft agreement on this point, is about Nick Cave during my, uh, my WFKU streams. Now, Nick Cave, his biggest talent is not so much as a songwriter himself, but as a collaborator. And take it from me, a grown-ass man in his early 40s who has been in somewhere in the area of a dozen bands, all of them fails. Knowing people, knowing who you can work with to help bring out your own talents and make the best of your own talents, that itself is a talent. So don't take this as saying that, you know, like, Nick Cave's biggest talent is as a collaborator. Like, that's not me saying that Nick Cave is in essence, untalented, but it is saying that his talent is probably not where a lot of people think it is, but that's okay. Um, on that note, um, as far as his solo albums go, like not as the Bad Seeds, etc., I really like Nocturama as an album, and I know, I just said that, like, Nick Cave left to his own devices is not as good as Nick Cave as a collaborator. So why? Why do I like a solo album? More to the point, why do I like the solo album that is uh, generally um, a critical failure, is uh, especially when it came out. I don't know how that uh, the sentiment still holds up. But yeah, when it came out, I remember when it came out, people hated that. Like, critics hated that. A lot of fans had no idea what really to make of it, but so why do I like it? Why would I say that, like, if we're counting Nick Cave's, like, solo efforts uh, put to album, why do I like this? Why would I say it's my favorite Nick Cave solo? And that's because it sounds like himself. And as I've gone on on my WFKU streams, uh, uh, The Boys Next Door, before the addition of Roland S. Howard, uh, under which they released one album as under that name, and then changed the name to Birthday Party. Other than that, mostly same lineup, right? Prior to the addition of Roland S. Howard to Boys Next Door, uh, they were a cover band. They were a covers band. Like, that's... There's really no two ways around it. There's no way to put that any other way. They were a covers band. Um, specializing in, like, power pop and garage rock covers from the... 60s and 70s so um so yeah they they were they were a covers band that's about it um you know some early punk covers but you know still like they were a covers band they were like pretty much straight up covers band and then roland s howard and then they did original material and more to the point they put it on record right so um so yeah i think i think nocturama is one of those underrated records because he sounds like himself. Like this is this is Nick Cave making the best of his own talents. Like bringing out the best of his own talents. But yeah, like Abattoir Blues, all that. Yeah, it's like, eh, honey, honey, you're trying a bit. You're trying a bit. But like I said, Nocturama, I like it. I like it. And you know, I, I know one other person who says that they like it. And, you know, she says that she likes it because he sounds happy for a change and he's allowed to be happy. I'm like, that is, that is a valid, <laughs> that is a valid interpretation, right? That, that is, that is certainly a worthy opinion. It's not an opinion I necessarily share, but it is a worthy opinion for why somebody would like an album, you know? Like, if that's what you got out of it, great, you know? But, like I said, my, uh, my deal with it is... I think he truly sounds like himself. Like this is, 
This is Nick Cave bringing the best out of his own talents. For all of you other uh, musicians out there who feel like your career in music is going nowhere, this applies to goths and noners alike, but considering that even within the goth tube realm, my own audience is very niche, I'm not expecting this to go very far outside of said, but whatever. So, here's a few names to keep in mind. Uh, Cindy Lauper, uh, age 32, I believe, when she put out her first solo album, and only two years before she, uh, she put out an album with her uh, previous band, uh, Blue Angel. Jet Black, age 41, I believe. That was the age he was when he formed uh, the Stranglers. Then we've got Klaus Nomi, age indetermined, but most likely around 41, 42-ish. Um, and that was how old he was when his, uh, when his first album, which doesn't match up, you know, very, you know, especially with his, uh, the stage show that it, that it began as, but still, like, that's how old he was when he released his first album. So, uh, you know, and he'd been performing, um, live with, uh, in the, uh, New York avant-garde and no-wave movement for only a few years prior. Also, vice versa of uh, Poison Girls. She was, she was at least 45 when she started Poison Girls. I want to say she was that old when she start, when she formed Poison Girls. So, like, if you're not yet dead, you're not too old to do the thing. And even if you are dead, if you're, if, if you left behind a necromancer amongst your loved ones, you may still be able to do the thing. <laughs> right! Let's say right. Let's see, additional aging androgynous goth boy words of wisdom. Let's say, as I've said many times before, but this is going to be for the, this is going to be for the first timers, as a club scene, goth and industrial are fraternal twins. In fact, they are fraternal twins in the same way that Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen are fraternal twins, which they are. They are fraternal twins, but especially to the untrained eye, they sure as hell look identical, don't they? But they're not. And I'm not just saying it for that reason, but because if you think about it, Gothic Rock and Industrial, as a club scene, have pretty much always coexisted. Uh, they came about like as genre of post-punk music. As genre of post-punk music, because as I've whined many times before, Post-punk is 100% not a genre. It is a movement. It is a movement that was a direct, defiant response against the rapid, heavy-handed commercialization of punk uh, as, a, as an artistic and subcultural movement. So, post-punk is a response to punk. Uh, specifically the commercialization of punk. It is not a single genre that can be defined in any meaningful sense. It's two separate yet equal genre of post-punk, industrial and goth, came about at approximately the same time. In fact, there are, there is significant crossover within musicians who, you know, became far more associated with one of the two, but who absolutely dabbled in both at the time, at the beginning. So, like, they just dated at the same time. They came from much the same DNA. If we, you know, think about, like, what influenced both of these? Well, a lot of the same musicians. I mean, yes, it wasn't a perfect um, circle on the Venn, but it was pretty significant. Ergo, like I said, this comes from, you know, a shared DNA. 
So much like fraternal twins, they're not even 20 minutes to catch the 4 BTC. And that's my cue to go. But as I as I said, you know, it, like, yeah, people want to ride my ass about going to the like, well, why do you call it a goth night if you even admit it's both a goth and industrial that's played there? And I'm going to be like, because as a club scene, like, the two are kind of synonymous. And note, I said kind of. That doesn't mean they're exactly the same, but it does mean that as a club scene, they've got the same DNA, they just dated at the same time. As a club scene, they are fraternal twins. As music genre, too, they are fraternal twins. And if you were to show the average person on the street, you know, a goth look and a rivet head, like, especially like a trad goth look and a lot of how like the, you know, more formative bands of, you know, that would become, you know, industrial music and thus the rivet head subculture. You, you show people on this, you know, random person on the street, picture of like the members of Skinny Puppy versus a me the members of Virgin Prunes or um, first lineup of Christian Death. They're not going to tell the difference. They're not going to tell the difference. Like I said, it's goddamn Olsen twins of post-punk. So, yeah. <laughs> Untrained eye, they're not going to see the difference. But, you know, to people who know a bit more, it's like, yeah, sure, we, we understand how these two differ. So, all right, I got to get the, I got to get my rear and gear, find the uh, shawl I intended to wear tonight, pick out, uh, um, 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 find my shoes, which they should still be right about at the, uh, at the door where I left them. Find some, uh, find some socks, find some jewelry. Actually, my rings, they're right over here from last night's shower. So, I'm gonna do all that and get my ass going. All right. So, uh. As always, um, have exactly the kind of day that you deserve. Um, wear your sunscreen. Uh, if you have more dollars than cents, go to my link tree, find my Patreon, or just tip me a dollar, buy my shitty music off of Bandcamp, something like that. All of the above, maybe. Well, maybe you are that crazy. All right. Uh, other than that, uh, Nosta Aquil, bats and kisses. Nigel. Nigel. Sweet boy. Sweetheart, you were looking right at me until... Hello, my love. I love you. Hello. Oh, bookcase cat. Oh, yes, my bookcase cat. Hello, I love you. Are you my beautiful boy? Nigel Bud. Nigel Bud. Now are you the love of my life. I love you. I love you. Sweet boy. Ah.